This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our season will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasonings such as the Coffee and Q, the <laughs> Smoked, S&P Bud, the Ope and the Mad Hatter, you can't go wrong with any seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code for the rest of this month, October, one year two zero at checkout for 20% off. That is one spelled out, O-N-E-Y-E-A-R two zero at checkout. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social media for information on where he's going to be this weekend. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's right, guys. We got a new sponsor. Now, if you ever wondered what kind of coffee's in that coffee in queue, it's the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's right. We have connections. <laughs> this is a uh, world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee. It is fresh roasted to your order. They don't roast the beans until you order it. Uh, this is a veteran owned company. That's right. You're supporting veterans and they have an amazing selection of coffee. Uh, they're out of Toledo, Ohio, Perrysburg, more specifically, all of their coffee is fair trade and USDA organic. Uh, they do have K cups available in some of their more popular flavors, free shipping over 50% or excuse me, over $50. And they have a subscribe and save service. All of this and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Nice, nice. We have a coffee sponsor. I've always wanted a coffee sponsor. No. Get ready, YouTubers. <laughs> it is. We are back to our Friday episodes. Normal <sighs> Friday episodes. We're going to do Know Your Enemy. We're not doing a lot of the in show. Of course, none of you, you guys don't get any of the in show music here on YouTube, but we don't, we've, we've, <clears throat> cut out a lot of our in-show music just to simplify the editing process. But if you think no, your enemy has gone anywhere, you are sorely mistaken. <laughs> Got to download and listen to that. I we've all, we've all heard the rage against the machine song a thousand times. It's fine. All right. Not let's a thousand and one. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's, let's rejoin <clears throat> our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I am pumped. Yes. I am pumped. We are back to our normal Friday episodes. Yes. Normally. <laughs> yes. Know your enemy has returned. Yes. We're I gonna, am we're so gonna do, excited. We're going to do finally the, here. We're going to do the rage drop. We have a coffee sponsor now. We've always wanted a coffee sponsor. I was just telling the YouTube people in our private aside that we have with the YouTube people. While everyone else is listening to the music. I... And I, I'm I'm really excited about Iron Bean Coffee. Um, I I'm 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 super excited. Um, we we have coffee and we have barbecue, and uh, we we had our first beer sponsor this year. And uh, I, the door's not closed with uh, uh, with uh, Wolf's Ridge. Yeah, a lot of a lot of first a lot of first going on here. We have our first episode with the Iron Bean Coffee, and it's the first game of the year here. For well, Ohio State. That that was implied when we said we're doing our first Friday episode, our first proper Friday yes. episode in a long time, and we're doing Know Your Enemy. I think we all know the 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 title of this episode is literally literally going to be Nebraska Ohio State preview. Like <laughs> it's implied. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's let's get into it. Yes. We have a lot to get. Oh over my God. Here. Yes. All right. Let's let's jump into some Buckeye news here. We're black stripe updates here. We have. What do we have? Six. We have six players. And they're coming fast. So we have six as of recording. And, and just in time here as two quarterbacks, CJ Stroud and Jack Miller, have their black stripes removed just in time. Yeah. Uh, it's it's about 730 on October 21st, just to put that timestamp on it. 
Kyle, first question. You think it's a yes. coincidence that they removed the black stripe from both of the freshman quarterbacks at the same time? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Follow up question. Do you really? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the other other four here, Cody Simon, Corey Rowe, for those who don't know, he's a trans graduate transfer from Baylor who's playing in the uh the also great tight end position. Uh, more on that here in a little bit. Uh, Jacob James, an offensive lineman, and Ryan Watts. Yes. Uh, yeah, lots of black stripes since we last talked to you, which for us was like two days ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Uh, some other news. Uh, next weekend, the Ohio State-Penn State game will be under lights and will be on ESPN at 730. That's going to yes. be really interesting as we keep seeing mixed things from the Big Ten about how many fans can go in the stadium and no, this there, and that. There's there's going to be no fans in the stadium. Like mm-hmm. there'll be some fans in the stadium, but I believe they're like, it's not open ticket sale. It's like each player gets a few tickets for close family members. I think is mm-hmm. is that I think the Ohio State cap is something like fifteen hundred. Something crazy low like that. I didn't put it in the notes. I'm yeah, that it's, number. It's basically nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of debate about that, but I'm just happy there's football. I'll just put it that way. I'm just happy there's football. We have too much. We have too much to talk to or talk about today to get into. Yep, agreed. Any so, of that. Um, other other news here. A um, couple more. Artificial crowd noise is allowed in the in the stadiums. I know that's been a big topic in other. Yep other games in the past few weeks, but the big 10 has come out and said they will provide tracks. Yeah. But they will be played at a very low volume. Yeah. They're big 10 provided tracks. So you can go ahead and just like, there's not going to be any booze in there. Like, I think I've heard some NFL games where the refs will make a bad call. And by bad, I mean, goes against the home team and they'll like play the boo track. These are all coming directly from the Big Ten. I'm gonna the, guess the ref should have no... just looked up at the, <laughs> just look up at the press box and be like, "Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Mike work, Kyle." Um, one other news: Haskell Garrett. We've mentioned him a number of times. Yeah. Um, he's being ready to play, and is day to day. Um, if I'm Ohio no, State, no, I think you misread go... that. Haskell Garrett oh, being, being ready, ready to, to play. play is day to day. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yeah. yeah. I, I now realize how I wrote that in the notes is confusing and I apologize. Yeah. Um, he says it's a doctor's decision. He's in a, he's in every meeting. He's in every walkthrough. He's doing everything a guy who was hoping to play would be doing. Yeah. Um, I've, I don't know this to be true, but I have heard that he is taking contact reps in practice. I don't a hundred percent know that to be true. That's some, that's something I've heard that I cannot confirm, but, uh, we talked to you guys of a couple few weeks ago where we said Haskell Garrett was going to play this year, but it probably wouldn't be in the first game or two, but that we would see Haskell Garrett play this year, which yes, considering what happened to him. And I'm assuming if you're listening to this podcast that, you know, what happened to Haskell Garrett, um, he was, uh, shot when trying to break up a random domestic issue that he happened to, across. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy Haskell Garrett's doing well. I'm happy that we're going to see him for his sake. Oh, I mean also for our sake as, as fans. Yes. I'm also happy about that, but that's like 10%. I'm 90% happy that Haskell Garrett for his own sake Mm-hmm. is going to be on the field this year and participating. Yep, absolutely. You know what else is back, Jared? What's that? Our game posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Released a new game poster. You can find that on our Twitter page, our Instagram page, our Patreon page. Now, you might oh, I'm Jared, I'm not on Patreon. Guess what? The poster's not behind the wall. You can, you can still go see it at patreon.com slash sloopcast. The Sloopcast? I forget. You can find it in the master link. Um, it's on Reddit. It's on the Buckeye Scoop forum. 
Uh, it's 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 a lot of places. I posted it a lot of places. And if oh, you like it so much, if you like it so much, it's also in our T Public page. There we go. You can buy your very own print of it, or get it on a T shirt or a coffee mug. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, poster. All of our uh, game posters this year are based off of movie posters. Mm-hmm. Uh, last I mean, year, a bunch of the posters were based off of propaganda posters, but I didn't necessarily. Jared. Yeah. Uh, well, ba- it wasn't so much propaganda posters as it was like old fashioned posters. Um, and that one's actually based on, uh, I think it was Ali Frazier. I think is what that one's based off of. So it wasn't mm-hmm. like propaganda poster, not in a literal sense, but more in a stylistic sense. It's just stuff from that era more than it is. Yep. Yep, but on yeah, your sorry. But yeah, I'm, definitely I'm, check them out. <laughs> yeah, but they're oh. they're 100 movie posters this year, and the Nebraska one is Children of the Corn. Yes, turned out really well. Thank you. Uh, what one last one last news here? Uh, LSU. Yeah, LSU has self imposed penalties for football violations connected to booster payments, including reduction in eight scholarships. Um, the school is also banning OBJ from its facilities for two years for handing out cash. Absolutely. Just in plain, just yeah. right on the field, like, hey, here's your money. Yeah, this isn't just that. There was also issue with bo- issues with boosters. Uh, they ran this investigation with the NCAA, but that does not mean that the NCAA is going to 100% accept these self-imposed mm-hmm. violations. There, sh- there very well could be more violations tacked on top of this. And I want to go ahead and tell LSU uh, from an Ohio State fan who went through this less than 10 years ago. Go ahead and just take that bull ban right now. Yep. You're, I mean, you're, you're already you're, seen how your year is going. Yeah. We, we see how not good you are. We see how good you are this year. Go ahead and just take that bull ban. Go ahead and just take it. Take the bull ban. Just do it. Just take that bull ban. Rip that Band-Aid. Yeah. Rip it. Uh, first reported by SI. Yes. Yep. All right. Let's do a couple Ask Sloopcast questions that are, are pertinent to this section of the show. Mm-hmm. Tanner Gale, who, by the way, is also our guest picker. More on that later. Uh, Tanner Gale asks us, uh, do you guys have a surprise slash breakout player to watch for the Nebraska game or just for the season in general? So for this game, well, depend depends on what you mean by the breakout. Uh, you could say you can, uh, uh, what, Kyle, you, you can give one answer for a breakout for casual fans, mm-hmm. and also a breakout for people who are, let's say, more than casual fans. I would say because he didn't get to play against Ohio State last year, um, the standout receiver Juan Dale Robinson. I think he means for Ohio State, but please oh, for Ohio State. Okay, yeah. Ohio State. <laughs> A oh, breakout four in okay. the Nebraska game. Got it. Um, oh boy. Uh, I would say for the season in general, probably also for this game, but wide receivers are wide receivers. They can go ham one game and disappear the next. That's just the nature of the position. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, we've all been talking about uh, Jamison Williams. Uh, yes. I, I think that's a name that people who listen to this podcast probably know and people who are on the Buckeye scoop forum probably know, but even your more than casual football fan probably doesn't know Mm -hmm. Um, for your casuals, for people who basically just really like Ohio state and they turn the game on and maybe they read an article once or twice a week. um, Trey sermon, I I think is a name that's he's going to make an immediate impact. That, that, is, that was the first one that came to my mind because you think about what happened three years ago. I Time, don't, time's escaping no, me. Just, just don't with the time. <laughs> uh, when um, J.K. Dobbins came in, we were like, we were like, oh, oh, we got this like new freshman. All of a sudden, came in and he made just a big splash from day one. And, and that, became, and that'll be your, that'll be your at least two freshman wide receivers as well. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a name that people listening to this podcast, whether it be Mookie Cooper, Smith Ninjimba, G Scott, Fleming. um, Fleming, Thank you. I couldn't think of Fleming's name for some reason. 
one of those guys are going to make a bunch of people again, more casual fans, but it's going to make a bunch of people just go, who, who's that guy? (laughs) And then you like the people who, who Mm -hmm. live and breathe this stuff will then get to turn to your, I, I, I'm going to say boyfriend. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to gender things. So you, the female listener of this podcast who knows all sorts of things can turn to your boyfriend and go, that's Jackson Smith Ninjimba. No, it's pronounced Ninjimba. Come on. What are you? The sloop cast mispronouncing his name. See what I mean? That's just how that works. Yes. All right. Um, so quickly over here, uh, some quick over unders from Austin formation. All right. Yes. Um, I'm going to guess this is just for this game here. So I would Jeremy, hope so. Yeah, Jeremy Ruckert over under two and a half catches. Over. Under. Ooh. I'm going to say I'm going to say for this game under because of what you just said just moments ago. All of those wide receivers coming in and out there. I know it's the year of the tight end. I know it is. <laughs> it's always and the year I, of the tight end. <laughs> And I've seen reports too. And I'm the year of the tight end. It's always the year of the tight end until it isn't. But here's the thing. (laughs) It's typically not the year of the tight end by like week two or three. It's still week one, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Give me the over. I I saw, and I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time finding right now, but I did see a report about uh, formations that used one and even a lot of two tight end sets yeah. too. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh, this is the year. This is the year 2020 that, here. That was a Buckeye but, scoop. Uh, Nevada nugget is where you, you saw yes, that. That was, yes. yeah. Thank he you. said that they're using two tight end formations because this ain't your urban Myers, Ohio state anymore. This is, we're getting at least a dash of Kevin Warren on this now. Excuse me. Oh my God. I committed the sin. Kevin Wilson. I'm wow. sorry, Kevin Wilson. I'm sorry. We love Kevin Wilson. We fire Kevin Warren. <laughs> All right. Yes. Hashtag. Hashtag. Justin fire. Fields over under 20 and a half pass attempts. Over. I think the only way this is under is if this game is over by halftime. I think the only way he stays under 20 is if he makes less than two or three pass attempts in the second half. Mm-hmm. Is about the only way that stays under 20. So a lot of that just depends upon how many yards per pass he's going to get. And a lot of that just depends upon how well the defense right. plays, stuff like that. Yes. I'm going to give you a little bit of stats real quick here. Number of games Justin Fields had that had this right here under 20 and a half pass attempts. How many games last year? Oh, I, we don't have time to do a big guessing game. You just no, no, this, just this one, just this one here. 20 and a half. How many games did he have last year under zero one? Okay. That was against Rutgers. Uh, <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You know what? Right. Kyle convinced me over. All right. Uh, Ohio state total points over under 49 and a half. A uh, little bit of a sneak peek to the sloop picks later. I have Ohio state scoring 49. <laughs> Um, so great job. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go over. I'm going to go over as well. Um, but that's, but that's a perfect number. I say defensive turnovers over under two and a half. Now I remember last year, Ohio state did a really good job against Nebraska early on with early turnovers and really yeah. set the tone. I think it was like three turnovers in like the first quarter, maybe like first quarter and a half, something like that. They had three turnovers and really set the tone at. So good job on that number there. Again, two and a half. I'm going to say under, because I think the, I think the, I think Nebraska is going to learn from their mistake last year and try to not to be cute with the ball. And yeah. they saw what happened last year when they turned the ball over. I think almost every single time they turned the ball over led to Ohio state points. Yeah. Martinez is a year older and uh, Dedrick Mills is a year older. Uh, I think that they have a uh, really good experience along the offensive line. I don't see this being a mistake prone Nebraska. I'm going to go under three. three turnovers is a lot. Uh, so I'm going to go under. Uh, I think a lot of that just depends upon 
Martin. I mean, obviously it always depends upon the quarterback. So that's a stupid thing to say, but yep. I'm going to go under, but it's a, it's a good, it's a good get. It's a good question. Um, all right. Over under one and a half total punts for Christman. I'm going to say over one and a half for the first team. Well, that that's different, but I, one and a half for the game over. That's that's you see, does Ohio State have a second punter they'd put in? I don't feel like they do because Chrisman probably needs the reps. No, what I meant was when the first team. I, was... I know what you mean. Okay, okay. I'm also asking the question in the fourth quarter, does a different punter come in? So um, I'm going to, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over um, just because to suggest there will only be one punt. Nebraska's not Rutgers. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, we, uh, we are very. They're, oh no, he's, he's actually, um, a commit. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, looking yeah, yeah. at a chart here. So no, they do not have a, oh, actually their backup punter, their, their backup punter is either, um, is one of their two kickers. So do they not have a backup punter? Do they not have a backup punter on scholarship? At I least bet not on I, scholarship. I, good... I guarantee there's probably someone on the team. Yep. All right. Last one here over under five and a half total team sacks. I'm going to go with honor just because of Martinez and how he's able to run the ball and how he's able to scramble. I'm going to go under. Yeah. And all five returning offensive linemen and five is just a big number. You can put a lot of pressure on Martinez and disrupt his game and disrupt the offense without actually getting the sack. So I'm going to go under on that, but that does not mean that Ohio state won't affect Martinez with the pass rush. Agreed. Yep. All right, uh, Justin Fields, 450 passing yards or 150 rushing yards. Which would be more surprising? I would say the rushing. Yeah. Just because of what Ohio State has. And if it's if it's 150 rushing yards, that means that there's issues with the running game. Yeah, I just, you have Gunnar Hoke, surprising. who is Gunnar Hoke and two true freshman quarterbacks, and we're trying to win a national title this year. I really and, don't – I just don't want Justin Fields to be running the ball that and, much. And honestly, both of the, both are staggering because uh, because oh, yeah. um, Fields has only thrown over 300 yards twice. Over 300? Mm-hmm. Only twice. Yeah. Yeah, it's – you can't expect them to have – I mean – both would be surprising, as Kyle just said, but yep. I just don't want Justin Fields to be running the ball. The number, unless unless he breaks a 99 yarder and a 51 yarder, I don't want Justin Fields having 150 yards rushing mm-hmm. the ball. All right. Um, if the O line is as predicted, do you foresee teams attacking the right tackle spot with the new newest starter slash least experienced player? And what schematic things can Ohio State do to cover for that player until they? get up to speed well, adding a tight end yeah. always helps or your running back yep. being able to help uh, chip in as well like do a chip block as well yep yeah all, all of those things as kyle said you can just sort of shift the entire offensive you can put the tight end on the other side but then have every offensive lineman sort of take a right step first um i i yep. whoever they put in at right tackle i have the utmost faith in i, I really mm-hmm. like npf I think that a lot of what we're what we were talking about with Paris Johnson Jr. and what the coaches talk about, I think a lot of that is them just bolstering up the freshmen. Yeah, I and, think, and, and a lot of it's going to be how how Nebraska is going to be really attacking um, defensively because they do run a three four defense, so you're not going to see a lot of. Um, defensive ends really coming at it. There's just three big defensive linemen just trying to clog up the holes there. Yeah. It's but really going to be on the linebackers to make plays. Well, but with a three, four, one of your linebackers are typically coming. It so is. how yeah. would you scheme against a inexperienced right tackle? Well, you bring your more of your blitzes to that side. Yes. Yep. But you, but Ohio state then just sort of counters by lining lining up the running back on that side, lining up the tight end on that side, just to sort of give those guys a, a, a bit of a, a step up. Yep. All right. Uh, last question here. Name one thing you would rather do than go another week without finally watching some Buckeye football. I forget who said it, but someone in our discord responded to this with have dinner with Kevin Warren, which mm. quite frankly, 
I would love to have dinner, dinner with Kevin Warren, but I think there's like a, a tone of, and you have to be nice. <laughs> um, I, yeah, no, I just let's, let's play some football. Yes. Let's, let's just play some football. All right, Kyle. Um, we're about to do the sloop picks. Let's, let's hear from one of our, one of our sponsors first. Uh, do you want to go or should I go? Uh, let's, let's let our new friend over at the iron bean coffee company go at it. Yeah. The iron bean coffee company, um, iron bean coffee company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned company. You're supporting veterans with the purchase of your coffee. Now you might go there and you might see that the prices are a tad higher than maybe you're used to playing, paying for coffee. But let me let you know one, it's a full pound. A lot of places sell you a quote unquote pound of coffee and it's actually 12 ounces. This is a full pound. Um, they're fair trade certified and USDA organic coffee beans. Uh, they import directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, and Ethiopia. Uh, they, one of their slogans is uh, integrity. Uh, it's their core value that they do the right thing even when no one's looking. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about one of their coffees real quick. Um, let's talk about the Odin. They have they have three coffees based off of Greek gods, but uh, we won't talk about Thor or Loki right now. Right now, we'll talk about Odin. This is a dark roast coffee. Um, will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. That's the Odin. Just so you know, the Thor is a medium dark and the Loki is a medium light. Uh, that's just one of a bunch of different great coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. All right, All right let's go ahead and go into our sloop picks here, Jared. Let's go into the sloop picks. All right, first game we have here, Jared, is Oklahoma taking on TCU. Oklahoma is a seven and a half point favorite i have a really hard time figuring out who the hell oklahoma is right now and ultimately they're a team that can't play defense i think that's the one thing we really do know about oklahoma so i think what i want to do here is just sort of take the points and walk away mm -hmm. so tcu at seven and a half i'm gonna take tcu at seven and a half i think had it been th three four five then probably go with oklahoma you get me over that touchdown mark, especially in a game that, <laughs> cause it's, it's a big 12 game played at noon. Uh, it could very well be a triple overtime game. Let me go ahead and just let's, let's take that seven and a half point buffer and walk away. So I'm going to go TCU. I, I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pick TCU as well. I just don't trust Oklahoma's <laughs> defense and TCU. I know they, on record, they're showing one and two, but both of their games, they lost closely. But yeah, seven and a half is quite a bit for what I think is going to be a close game as well. So yeah, I'll pick the Horn Frogs here. All right, Kyle. Uh, Next up, we have Iowa State going to Oklahoma State. Oh, oh, let's hear from oh, Tanner. Darn let's it. Hear from Tanner. I always do that. All right, Tanner says here, TCU has played three close Big 12 games against two opponents who are playing on a similar level as Oklahoma. That is, that is with Kansas State and Texas, an equality <laughs> Iowa State team. Plus, after watching Oklahoma versus Texas, I feel like Oklahoma is actively trying to lose games this year. I trust TCU to at least keep it close. I'll take TCU to cover. All right, we are all in agreement. Spot on. All right, All right, what do we got next, Jared? Iowa State going to Oklahoma State. Iowa State's three and one. Oklahoma's three and zero. Oh. Oklahoma's had a few games uh, shit canned. Uh, let's see. This is being played at three thirty, and Iowa State Kyle is a three and a half point favorite. Hmm. This one's tough because I I have Iowa State to being in contention be right there for the big 12 yeah um title and all that but you you pick preseason picks iowa state to 
go to the Big 12 mm-hmm. championship game. Yeah. But I I don't know, just something about Oklahoma State, just I think they learned from week one. Yeah. And I, I think I think they'll show up better and I think they'll cover here. Fair enough. I like Iowa State. Um, I and I, the Big Twelve is just such a mess in general that I kind of just uh, once again feel the need to just take the underdog and take the points and walk away. Mm-hmm. Like, let me let me just walk away with the underdog. Let me walk away with the points on my side. Because with these Big Twelve games, man, I just feel like they can go either way. Because it. It feels like such a hodgepodge right now. So I'm going to take the points, walk away. We're going with the underdog. Give me Iowa State. All right. Sounds good. So we uh, differ on that one. Yep. All right. Next up here. What's Tanner say? Thank you. Tanner. (laughs) It was your your turn to forget. Kyle has Iowa State. So I will strategically take Oklahoma State. (laughs) It's weird for him to go out on that limb and then to be wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, Jared. First Big Ten game. Finally. First Big Ten game that we are going to go over is Penn State and Indiana. And yes, this is correct here. Penn State is a six and a half point favorite. I kind of want to take Indiana just because this feels like a trap. Does this feel like a trap to you? No. Because I feel like, at the very least, this should be seven and a half. No. At the very least, it should be seven and a half. I think it probably should be something more like, Kyle, where where would you have guessed this game would be? I would have put, like, 13 and a half. I mean, I was thinking 14, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it feels like a trap, so I kind of want to take Indiana. I, I, feel, I feel like we're walking into a trap here, but screw it. Let's take Penn State. I feel like I'm walking into a trap, but let's do it. Let's take Penn State. It feels too obvious. You know, traps that coming up here in a couple of games, but you got Indiana, you said? No, 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 no. I just, I'm taking Penn State. I'm just okay. saying it feels like a trap. Okay. All right. We both got Star, Penn State here. Star Wars meme goes here. All right. Penn State, or excuse me, Tanner says here, no Mike up Parsons for the Nittany Lions. Nope. Could spell trouble for that defense against a talented mm-hmm. Michael Penix Jr. Oh, okay. Yeah, furthermore, how, how much deeper does it go than Penix? Mm, furthermore, I expect Indiana to step up and beat either Penn State or Michigan this year to claim their spot as the number three team in the East. Ooh. He has Indiana to cover. Okay. I, you know what? I'm telling you, Penn State, this game feels like a trap. So respect, Tanner. Respect. Yeah. I mean, Tanner's beating us both. So far, well, so <laughs> <laughs> where, where, we don't have room to talk. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Uh, next up here, we have ooh, this one for you, Ohio State fans. Don't <laughs> want to cover your ears here for these teams. It's Iowa and Purdue. Yeah, yeah. Iowa is a three and a half point favorite. Who do you have here, Jared? Uh, these two teams feel like a lot of unknowns to me. Purdue lost some players, then they got their players back. Uh, players who opted out and opted back in, uh, most notably, um, oh, how am I going to blank on his name? I can only think of Wandale Rob- Rondale Moore. Rondale Moore, I got there. I can only think of Wandale Robinson because I'm so uh, Nebraska-focused right now, but Rondale Moore. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's this is kind of... This is kind of my recurring theme this week. Iowa had a lot of off the field issues this year. A lot of controversies behind the scenes. How does that affect them culturally in a season where having a good locker room culture feels like the most important possible thing you could have? I got to go with Purdue. And that's only because I have no idea who's going to win this game. I don't think I was anything special this year. I think Purdue's a team, a franchise in general program, rather, that's just trending upwards. And I think Nebraska might be trending downwards. So go ahead and just give me the, once again, I'm going to take the points. I'm going to walk away. Go ahead. I'm going to mm-hmm. pick the underdog. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to walk away. Yeah. I just think there's just so much distraction going on in Iowa right yeah. now. Um, I And I just, 
maybe this is just because of how well he played against Ohio State. But yeah, um, I just like Randall Moore just to really pick up where he left off and make a difference in this game. Absolutely. So I got the Boilermakers. Boiler up. All right, Tanner. Tanner says here, I was leaning Iowa. Then I heard that Jeff Brom caught the Urona, and that solidified my pick. I believe that Purdue having to play without their head coach, which is a, another point. Yeah. Um, without their head coach in the season opener, a game where so much is still being figured out on both sides of the ball with limit their ability to adjust to what Iowa throws at them and ultimately leads to their demise. He does have Iowa. Okay, to real, cover. real quick. We talked about this last week because of Nick Saban and it turned out Nick Saban was, and we didn't know it at the time, but a false positive, or at least it mm-hmm. looks that way. Since then, uh, Dan Mullen at Florida, along with a bunch of Florida players, uh, their entire program is basically on hold right now in Florida, uh, tested positive. Uh, and as Tanner just pointed it out, Jeff Brom has teft- tested positive and won't be on the sidelines this week for Purdue. And so last week I talked a lot about culture, 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 culture. How important is culture when sort of putting together a college football program, right? It's, I think, maybe one of the most important things. And that's one of the things I was talking about on last Friday's episode. And then I'm watching the uh, Big Noon kickoff show with Urban Meyer. And I have to say, my head, I was like the Grinch, except it was my head grew three sizes that day. Because what did Urban Meyer say were the two most important things that a head coach does? In fact, to the point that he said if he wasn't doing one of those two things, he was wasting his time and that he left a note on his desk telling him this. Culture building and talent acquisition. And he was talking about this also in the context of coaches missing games during due to coronavirus. He, he goes, the coach, the head coach's main job is to build a culture and to acquire talent. And basically neither of those things are done on game day. Yep. Jeff Brom has built a culture at Purdue. It's a good culture. I know that because the program in general is trending upwards. He's doing a good job with talent acquisition, the best we've seen by Purdue standards in a long time. I, I think Jeff Brom's doing a good job there, and I don't think missing a single game, even if it's the first game, completely throws the, the team off of their rails. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> All right, next up here, speaking of trapped games, game day. Michigan and Minnesota. Yeah, this is being played at 7 30 as kyle pointed out this is our game day special for the week Mm -hmm. um michigan's going to minnesota minnesota favored by three and a half points michigan is favored by three excuse me michigan favored by three and a half points uh my turn or your turn kyle uh it's my turn i have a feeling we or we are rowing this boat to victory that damn boat we are rowing this boat to victory yep I mean, I'm for three and a half points, I am. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is a game. Once again, it's my theme this week. It was accidental. I promise you this isn't like uh, a strategy I'm going to stick to from here on out or anything else like that. Mm. But for this week, it was, in fact, my strategy. I'm taking the underdog. I feel like both teams have an equal chance of winning this game in my head. So I'm just going to take the underdog. Yep. I think Michigan-Minnesota is a real coin flip of a football game. And I actually kind of lean Minnesota again. Why? I think one team has a culture that is trending up. And I think you have one team that has a culture that is trending down. And once again, as culture is always important, but because of this season being what this season is in 2020 as a world being what 2020 is culture, which was maybe the most important thing is Mm -hmm just even more important this year. And again, one team's on the ups, the other team's on the down row that damn boat. Yep. Tanner, I would never pick that team up North muck Fishigan row the boat. Tanner Morgan. Great name. Give me (laughs) Minnesota. Fair enough. All right. Last game. No, not second to the last game. There you go. Virginia and Miami. 
of Florida. Miami, we're, the only, the, we're the only podcast in the world that says Miami of Florida. <laughs> the Hurricanes is an 11 and a half point favorite. Uh, it is your pick, Jared. Uh, I, I'm going to go Miami. I, I don't. I don't. The ACC is such a clusterfuck in my head. I don't know. Give me Miami. That's it. That's that's my expert analysis. I got. I fuck got it, Miami get, is. I got Miami. Give me well, Miami is but, my expert analysis. Yeah, I got Miami as well. But Jared, is the ACC as great as what you claimed it to be at the start of the season? It's impossible to tell because the conferences are only playing each other. I feel like the only reason we all know that the Big Twelve is bad is because they spent a week playing Sun Belt teams and got their ass kicked. That is true. Yeah. I don't right. know. They're only Tanner, playing each other. How do we know? Yeah. Tanner says here, Miami built trust by smashing Louisville and Florida state ruined that trust by not showing up against Clemson then rebuilt it by covering versus Pitt. Virginia has lost by at least 17 to wake forest and NC state who are both lesser opponents than Miami. He likes Miami to cover. That's, much better sounding analysis than I had. <laughs> yes. All right, Jared. It is time. Okay. Nebraska heading on to Columbus time. to take on what Jared likes to call the fighting Buckeyes. Kyle, did you say Columbus? I sure did. Did you say Nebraska? Might have. Did you say Columbus? For a second time, yes. <laughs> I've, we're out of practice on this, aren't we? Did you say the horseshoe? <laughs> I sure did. Okay. Did you say fighting? <laughs> I said the Buckeyes. You said the fighting Buckeyes. I said the fighting bike guys. Or Buckeyes. <laughs> it is time, Jared, to know your enemy. Hi, YouTube. This is a short music break. Shh. <laughs> know your enemy, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Kyle, we're going to get to know our enemy. But first, do we want to get to know our sponsor, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company? Yes, the Mad Canadian. Mad Canadian has been a good friend of ours for the past year, uh, sponsoring the Swoopcast here, and he's celebrating a one year anniversary by a promo by giving out a 20% off promo code by using the code one year two zero one spelled out O N E Y E A R two zero at checkout for 20% off for the entire month of October. If you're missing this in October, you can still use Slootcast 10 at checkout. Um, Mad Canadian. What, what have we not said about the Mad Canadian? We've said, just about everything in the past year here about how, yeah. how he's mad as a hatter. Uh, mm -hmm. He has all these different seasonings. He sends he me angry emails. He sends you angry emails, messages. You shouldn't tug on his beard and no. all, all of this stuff. Uh, some of the guys, other great seasonings. Guys, look, look yes. me straight in the eyes. Straight in the eyes. Straight in the eyes. Don't tug <laughs> on his beard. <laughs> making me cough here <laughs> um mad canadian great seasonings um mentioned a few the beginning of the show name a few other ones the brits blend the savory carry steak the and the old fashioned just a few of the great seasonings on over at the mad canadian bbq.com that is the mad canadian bbq.com you gotta be sure to check out all the social medias of the Mad Canadian to check out where he is heading next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Cup and where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle, back to the corn huskers. Yes. It, it is, is it is time to know our enemy. So long. So long since we've done one of these. <laughs> it's been a real Nebraska long time. taking on Ohio State. Ohio State is a twenty six and a half point favorite. 26 and a half points. Yes. Kind of a review from Nebraska last year. They finished the season last year, five and seven, three and six in the big 10. And they return a few Q, actually quite a few um, good key players from last year, including their quarterback, Adrian Martinez, uh, the running back, Diedrich Mills, 
I'm, and wide receiver Juan Dale Robinson. Uh, for and, those who don't remember, Juan Dale Robinson actually missed the Buckeye game yeah. last year, which definitely was noticeable as Ohio State just mopped the floor out of Nebraska last year. Yeah, and it also should be noted, and I think I already pointed it out at least once this episode, five offensive linemen returning. Yes. So a real stable uh, returning unit here for the offense. Your quarterback, your top running back, your five offensive linemen, and your best wide receiver. Of -hmm. course, if you're Nebraska, you want to see Wondell Robinson stay a bit healthier this year, but he's, he's a true sophomore. You can't hold one year of injuries against the guy per se. But even missing games last year, he had... 40 receptions for 450 yards and two touchdowns, but much like, you know, not, not so much as of late or maybe even in the future for Ohio state, not just a receiver. He sort of plays that flex role. He also had 88 rushes last year for three touchdowns and nearly 350 yards. You can basically think of him and, you know, I know Ohio state fans don't like to hear this name, but he's, he's, basically Rondell Moore, but in red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, Their running back, Dedrick Mills returns a a solid running back. I'm not going to call him a, a, like a really good running back, but he's a solid, he's a solid, solid running back for Nebraska. Probably the key thing for Nebraska is they add in a Juco wide receiver, Omar Manning, big, big wide receiver. Ohio State's really going to have to watch out. 6'4", 225 pound wide receiver. Um, he was an All American last year in oh I forget what exactly the division's called. But... Well, it's it's a, it's a junior college. Uh, it was Kilgore College, I believe. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He, he had he had thirty four receptions, seven twenty seven, and six touchdowns last year as a as a sophomore. But definitely keep an eye out. I mean, six four two twenty five. That's that's a big guy trying to cover. That's that's almost a tight end right there trying to yeah. trying to cover. So that's going to be probably one of my key things for Ohio State defensive backs, as we mentioned before. You have probably Sean Wade covering Wondale Robinson. Who's going to cover? Well, who's going to cover him there? I think it'll be interesting to see who they match up against whom, because Wondale's a slot guy. He's their favorite that's guy. Too. He's kind of like KJ Hill. He's not like a quote unquote number one receiver type because he's a, he's a slot, a slot guy. Uh, same thing. If you think of like Curtis Samuel, not like the wide receiver, but still a guy who catches a ton of balls. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Will Ohio state try and go best on best, including moving Sean Wade potentially with Wondell Robinson, which could in fact move him into the slot. Yep. which is Sean Wade came back specifically not to play the slot this year. That was one of his main motivations for coming back. Yeah. All right. Uh, just some other names to keep out, keep an eye out on the defensive side. Um, returning players, linebacker Colin Miller um, was a, just a very solid inside linebacker for Nebraska last year. He had nearly 70 tackles and five and a half tackles for loss last year. Um, one of their better uh, defensive backs to return, Cam Taylor, who had nearly 50 tackles and a pair of interceptions last year. And keeping an eye on the the big slobs on their defensive side, uh, Ben Still and their nose tackle, Damian Daniels. Just that, a couple of names to keep out, keep an eye out for. Yeah, that, that being said, uh, unlike the offense, which uh, feels like a very stable group of returning veterans, uh, the defense, not so much. Uh, Thayer Munford said in a press in the uh, in some press availability this week uh, that he specifically pointed out that one of the challenges they're going to have with the Nebraska defense is not knowing who's going to start or play. You know, he sort of points out that a lot of the time with a Big Ten opponent, you at least at least have a few uh, games of tape to to look at, and you know, last year they did start with a Big Ten game, but. That, that's the exception, not the rule. Mm-hmm. And so here we are only playing Big Ten teams, at least during the regular season this year. So it's it's a bit of a challenge to sort of walk into a Big Ten game completely fresh. 
especially as Thayer Munford pointed out, they're not really sure who's going to be playing. Yep. And if we can jump back over to the offense real quick. Uh, yes, Adrian Martinez is returning, but don't be surprised if we see uh, some competitive snaps potentially uh, from they have a, a new quarterback, Luke McCaffrey. Uh, Tough Borland talked about how they have to be ready for both and that they're preparing for both. Um, Scott Frost says that they aren't going to announce much, much of a depth chart, uh, but that Adrian Martinez will start at quarterback, but that both he and Luke McCaffrey are capable of moving the ball. Yep. Uh, so yeah. we're, we're, we're going to potentially, it's one of the interesting things to keep an eye on. It's, it's one of those unknowns. It's a known unknown. Will we see Luke McCaffrey take competitive snaps this weekend? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, both Greg Madison and Tuck Borland talked about one day Robinson saying about he's a threat. He's a great athlete. Um, they did a lot of things this um, to prepare for him, try to cover every base. And when it comes, when it comes to defending him, he's their top um, threat for that offense. Yeah. That's, you know, I, I think we, we aren't doing the, uh, the sloop sayers like we did in the past, just because we don't, we've been running over on time a lot lately. Um, so we just kind of cut it for time. But if we were still doing the sloop sayers and we were still predicting like the number one guy to keep an eye out for it's Wondell Robinson first, yep. second, third, fourth, and fifth. Mm -hmm. if, if, I mean, you could argue Adrian Martinez too. I mean, he, he's, he's your do it all quarterbacks. I mean, he led the team in rushing attempts last year. Which I think is just a bad sign for your offense overall. Yeah. Yeah. And what does that say about the offensive line too? I know you said that all five return, but is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I mean, good thing chemistry wise, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, yeah, I think, I think we'll see um, another quote from Squ uh, Scott Frost in regards to their quarterback. Uh, he says, I think we have our two first string quarterbacks. I think that's an that's an interesting way to frame that. He doesn't say we have our two deep. He says, I think we have our two first string quarterbacks. You, we could you could easily count that as a as, we as don't a, have a quarterback. Well, I wasn't going there. <laughs> I was going to say you could easily interpret that in one of two ways. Now, if we took it as complete face value, he's saying he has a one a and a one B mm -hmm. he could have meant we have a clear number one and a clear number two. That's not what he said, but he could have meant that. But then he does go on to say that there isn't a lot of separation and kind of implied that the experience is the only reason that Adrian Martinez is going to start. Uh, again, he didn't specifically say that was the only reason, but that's, Kind of the implication if you if you parse the words. So I interpret that as potentially meaning and maybe their expectations are in line for what they can expect to happen against Ohio State. But if we don't see Adrian Martinez move the ball or run the offense in a manner that Scott Frost wants to see, that we could very well see Luke McCaffrey come in. Mm -hmm. if you remember, I mean, it was it was almost ten years ago when Ohio State played Nebraska. I think it was the first time they faced each other as Big Ten opponents. That, I believe that was the lost season in 2011. Mm -hmm. And that was a that was the hey, game. We Ohio have State we have lost. two we have two quarterbacks, but we really didn't. I Kyle, I like the rest of Buckeye Nation have retained no memories from that season. Except the Wisconsin game. We all remember the Wisconsin game. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. because of Braxton Miller. Everything else from that season, flushed. Yes. Flushed. <laughs> all right. Anything else about this team? Anything else about this Nebraska team that our listeners should know about? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to go as in-depth on this as we'd like to, uh, simply because it's the first game of the season. We haven't seen Nebraska yet. Um, I just want to say, I want to take this as an opportunity once again, 
if they're maybe I know we acquired a lot of Cornhusker followers on Twitter over uh, this tumultuous off season that I once again just want to thank Cornhusker Nation. If not for Ohio State and if not for Nebraska, both your lawyers, your parents, your players, your coaches, your administrators, along with all of that, but over here as well, I don't think Ohio State, Nebraska, or anyone else in the Big Ten are playing this weekend, nor are they playing this calendar year. So this is just me sincerely talking to any Nebraska fans or podcasts or whoever uh, might be listening in this week. Th- thank you. And also, I'm sorry, because I think we're going to crush you. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry for what's about to happen, um, but... <laughs> Thank you. Well, we, with with, with all to, sincerity, thank you. We do have to pick this game, though. I know we normally have this. And do a final score. Yep. Our sleep, since we don't have the sleep sayers here, 26 and a half is the over under for this game. Uh, I have our sleep to cover. And my point total is 66. Well, we're not doing that. We have, you have to do a final score, Kyle. Oh, final score. That's right. Let's see. A total of 66. So let's do <laughs> Ohio State. Let's do Ohio State 52, Cornhuskers 14. There's no way that eats equals 66. 52 plus 14 is 66. Uh, oh, you said 52. 52. I heard 42. We'll, 52. we'll know later because this is recorded what you said. I know but what I, I said. 52. I heard 42. 52. 52. Okay. okay. You know what the funny thing is? I also have a... <laughs> I also have a 66. But we got there differently because I said 49 to 17. Okay. Which is a point differential of 32, which means I'm going with Ohio State. All right. All right. Tanner. Tanner says, it's fun making new friends, right? <laughs> but you know what's more fun? Winning a national championship and that road starts here. Yeah. Clemson has shown its cards by stopping on Georgia Tech set 73 to 7. I want to compare Nebraska to Georgia Tech, but okay. Uh, Clemson is not messing around and it's time that goes both ways. The Buckeyes cannot afford any tight games or they have zero shot at the one seed, which we mentioned is a crucial one as we saw last year. Uh, he has the Buckeyes winning 55, Nebraska 10. And that is a cover. And he also goes under us. So he has 65. Oh, 65. He has 65 wow. as a point total. He has Buckeyes yeah, 55, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nebraska 10. I did hear that right. So he's on, but my point is, is that he's just under us. Yeah. So if it comes down to a tiebreaker, no one's got a t-shirt off of us yet. And by the, he's already claimed he wants a DBU shirt. He's already okay. put the order in. He's confident. <laughs> he wants one of our Buckeye Sloopcast DBU shirts. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's just under us. So from a price is right standpoint, although not, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's a great strategy. Mm. It's, it's after the fact. So it's, it's incidental, but that's, that's still fun. Nonetheless. It is, All right. Yes. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else I had something. Oh yeah. So about, uh, Tanner said something about making friends and all that. I just want to say friendships last a lifetime but national titles last longer than that. <laughs> True. This is, they don't, they, they, they don't put dates up in Ohio stadium for friendship. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know, just, just a quick question here, Jared. Uh, Cause I know Fox did this uh, against, I think the, yeah, against the Oklahoma, Texas game. They said, Hey, what do you want our choice camera to be? Their choices here. I just want your your thoughts here. Do you want their choice camera to look over Ohio State offense, Ohio State defense, all Nebraska, or the trenches? Trenches. No. Um, I would I honestly would love it, and I know I'm the only person on the planet who wants this. Because mm-hmm. because they kind of played around with it a couple years. ESPN, I believe, did uh in an Ohio State game a couple years ago where they were like doing a camera 
from like way up under a scoreboard and it was basically like a real zoomed out Madden view and everyone was bitching even though it was in junk time anyway. I would love that. I would love nothing else that the Madden view. The if, Madden view. If if these games were broadcast in Madden view. So we could actually see the wide receivers. We could see what the quarterback sees. We could see holes in the offensive line. The only reason why we like the camera angle that is the standard is because it's the standard. It's because it's what we're used to. If we just forced the Madden view down everyone's throats for a year, we'd all get used to it. And we would all be like a year later, everyone be like, man, I hated that at first. But now that I'm used to it, I love Madden view all i want we got these beautiful cable cameras now that fly around you could put it right behind i mean obviously not right behind but behind the quarterback like i said you it's such a superior view you can actually see all 22 of the players you can actually see where holes open up in an offensive line why are we not using madden view on television it's because we're not used to it it deviates from the norm you know, it'd be really impressive. What's that? When there's a turnover, the camera would be able to do a 180. Then, <laughs> I, I well, I'm not. I'm not trying to get fancy. I just want. I just want to watch games yeah, in yeah, Madden yeah. View. It's all I want. I don't right. think that's a ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous because it's such a deviation from the norm. But that's the only reason why we don't want it is because it deviates from the norm. You know what? Why not? 2020. I think it's because we're all dealing with enough change right now that the last thing anyone should be doing <laughs> is forcing unwanted change on people who are already being forced unwanted change upon. All right. With that, we are <laughs> going to go into some Ask Sloopcast questions. Yes. Uh, uh, let's lightning around these, which is a right. thing I say frequently, but execute rarely. Yes. Dinger says, what is your opinion on the Big Ten's explanation that allowing schools to have different number of fans in the stands amount to an unfair competitive advantage in regards to their, quote, no fans policy? And do you see this policy continuing into next year with large fan base schools being required to artificially limit fans to whatever pathetic <laughs> number Illinois or Purdue can muster for attendance? I, I think you know the answer to the latter. I think you're being goofy, and I think you know that. Uh, but I, what do I think of it? It's just a thing I'm willing to lose right now. If this was an item that was negotiated at the table, that the people who were trying to get football back had to sort of put fans as a sacrificial lamb on the debate table, on the, what's, what's the word, the negotiation table, if that was a thing that had to die to get October football into place, that's fine. And we can look back on it now and say, man, I wish we had fan attendance. And selfishly, I do. Um, but I think what I've seen from a lot of the SEC games and from a lot of the games that we've seen so far, you can be like, hey, everyone, wear masks and social distance in the stadiums. But by the end of the game, no one's wearing a mask and they're all crowded down as close to the field as possible. And while people in the SEC and SEC country might say, eh, who cares? blah, 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 blah. You know who isn't going to say, ah, who cares? The Big Ten, the Big Ten presidents, the Big Ten. Uh, when any chance Ohio State fans could have had of actually watching games in the shoe this year, I think have been basically ruined by some of the things we've seen down in SEC country where Texas A&M said they had like, 35,000 fans in there, but it was clearly like half of the stadium and no one's wearing masks. And like I said, by the end of the game, everyone's crowding down and they're not respecting the social mm -hmm. distance thing. I think a lot of big 10 officials and a lot of Kevin Warren's and a lot of school presidents saw all that happening. And I think that when they saw that happening, they said, well, that's not going to be us because we're the big 10. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. I, I know you said Kevin Warren, but it almost sounded like you're about to said Karen Warren. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going there, Kyle. We're already over. I'm not going there. <laughs> I just wanted the reaction. That's all. Okay. Win loss prediction for each of the big 10 teams, assuming all nine games are played. 
Oh, man, that's a lot for us already being over. Uh, Did, didn't we cover this a few weeks ago? I thought uh, we went through the Big Ten teams. Maybe uh, I don't think we did all of them. No, we didn't. All right, let me pull up. Yeah, we're. By the way, just fair warning: these aren't going to make mathematical sense. We're just going to lightning round yes. these, okay? All right. Uh, so nine games. Nine games. Nine games. All right, Indiana. Um, three and six. Okay. Uh, Maryland. One and eight. Oof. One and eight. Oof. Uh, Sparty. <laughs> it might be better than that, but I'm not looking at their schedule. I'm making this up off the top of my yeah. head. <laughs> Sparty. Uh, one and eight. I was going to say like three and three and six. I told you this isn't going to make mathematical sense. I'm just doing this off uh, the top of my head. Michigan. Uh, five and four. That's what I was thinking. Five and four. Penn State. Uh, eight and one. Rutgers. Oh, and nine. Buckeyes. Maybe Maybe one and eight. Maybe one and eight. I'll Buckeyes. say one and eight. Buckeyes. Nine and oh, baby. All right. Illinois. Do I want to give them two wins or do I want to give them three wins? Where, what are you feeling? One. All right, so we'll go two. <laughs> two and seven. Uh, Iowa. Um, Four and five. Sounds about right. Minnesota. Six and three. I was going to go seven and two. I, the, off the top of my head, man, I'm not... If if you actually gave me time to think about this, these might be different, but I'm just mm-hmm. doing it off the top of my head. All right. Cornhuskers are good friends. Didn't Minnesota have a pretty favorable cross-division draw? If uh, well, other than playing Michigan first. Um, they? Yeah, they play Maryland. And? Michigan. And? Well, isn't there three cross? Oh, the, but the third, we don't know what the third cross is. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cornhuskers. Um, five and four, four and five. Which one? I was going to. I was going to go with four and five. All right, we'll go four and five. Wildcats. Three and six. It's going to go two and seven. Uh, uh, Boilermakers. Four and five. That's I'm thinking four and five as well. Maybe yeah. And the Badgers. Uh seven and two. Yep. Going to seven and two as well. Man, I'd love to revisit this, but actually put thought into it. <laughs> actually like look at like actually look at the schedules and Yeah. Yeah. But oh well. Alright. That's it. That is all the questions. That is know your enemy. That is no. We finished Know Your Enemy a long time ago. We did, but that is our first coverage, first pregame coverage for the Ohio State 2020 season. False. We have one more thing to do. Our good friend Stuart E4, Stuart underscore E4 US vet, who's now a Patreon, by the way. You're a patron via Patreon. You have me doing it now, Kyle. You're uh, welcome. And longtime listeners of the show know that Kyle and I are terrible at pronouncing people's names. Uh, Stuart has sent us some Nebraska. I was supposed to do this and know your enemy, but I forgot. So I'm doing it now. We'll do this and know your enemy in the future. So I'm going to try and pronounce some of these names for Nebraska and mess them all up. But you guys can laugh at me and that's fun. All right. So Jared's going to pronounce these. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. Uh, first one here under the strong safety. Number eight, uh, Deontay Williams. I think you nailed that one. Nice. All right. Um, also, the one right next to that one. Another strong safety, number 26. I think that's Noah, which it's not spelled with an H. Like, we're used to seeing Noah, but I'm going to go ahead and still say that's Noah. It might just be no. Sort of the two vowels go walking mm-hmm. thing. Um, Pola Gates. I'm yep. going to go Noah oh. Pola Gates. Yep. Might I just be no Pola Gates. All right. All right. The free safety. A lot of interesting safety names. All right. Uh, number nine, 
Markel Dismuke. Dismuke? Dismuke? Yeah, Dismuke. probably with a long U. I yeah, it's definitely a long U. I think if anything, I'm messing up the the first vowel, the I in between the D and the S. Might be Dismuke. I, I think it's Dismuke. Okay. But, all right. Uh, the punter, which I've seen the numbers change, 90 or 99, but either way, the punter. Uh, William Pristup. Pristup. Oh, yeah, there's a Y in there. There's a Y in there. I'm trying to av- I'm trying to pretend that still- Y isn't there, but it's mm, there. That's tough. If that Y and the Z were swapped. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I pron- I pronounced it the first time, and I swapped those two letters because that's the only way I can make it make sense. It's P R Z Y S T U P. So I want to do Pristup, but that's Prizzy like Stup? Prizzy Stup? That's three cons- consonants in a row, which really shouldn't be possible, not in English anyway. And this yeah. name is obviously not English. Yeah. All Next. Right. Last one. Last one, all the way down on defense, a defensive end, number 49. Phil, I'm going to go Feldarius. Feldarius yes. Payne. Feldarius Payne. I like it. All right. All right, Kyle. Now, that's the end of the show. All right. <laughs> I, You know what? I think we did okay on that. Mm, I think so, too. Nebraska does not have a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say crazy names that that's disrespectful, but um, I'll say difficult names, difficult names for a pair of white, uh, white boys from Ohio. (laughs) Um, You can't pronounce names. Oh, who are notoriously bad at at pronouncing names. Um, I think we did okay on that. It's the, the, the punter really threw us, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to encourage everyone uh, check out your, uh, t-shirt stores, both at 7071 and at Sloopcast. Uh, you can find those on your T Public pages. If you're looking for links to those stores, you can find it underneath the master link. Underneath that master link, you can also find links to our Patreon. Uh, we picked up two new Patreons since the last time we talked to you, and we're incredibly thankful for that. In honor of week one, game week, Big Ten Week One. Can we get one new Patreon? That's it. If you're on, if you're on the verge, if you're on the edge of maybe I'll sign up, maybe I won't. Well, it's game week. Let's celebrate it. And I'm telling you right now, uh, for the rest of October, Mad Canadian has a promo code that dwarfs the one that we're telling you publicly that he's giving to the members of our Discord. So if you're in our Discord, which you can only access via the Patreon, you sign up for Patreon, I send you a Discord link, you get into the Discord, there's an even better promo code. Ah, That's all I'm saying. I'm not telling you for how much. I'm just saying it lasts for for October, and it's better than the 20% we're currently offering publicly. That's all I'm saying. So if you think about it, yeah, well, save money. Potentially. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Potentially, maybe. So, uh... If we, like I said, if you're, if you're on the edge, if you were like maybe just about to do it, I just want one new one this weekend. That's it. Just one new one. You can get, uh, access to basically everything for as little as $3 a month. And this is the, uh, official Sloopcast tee. It's sort of a, a tasteful logo just right here on the breast pocket. Um, Kyle's, we're both wearing Buckeye scoop gear this episode. Not on purpose. <laughs> No, like we I just, coor- we didn't coordinate it. No. Yeah. I think that by not on purpose. Yes. Kyle yeah, means we didn't coordinate it. Um, no, I was just having a bad hair day. <laughs> I'm wearing the hat. That's, yeah, that's all hair, that was. My hair is getting a little long and my hair looks fine in the morning, but towards the evening, it <laughs> doesn't look as good. So yeah. So, uh, haircut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I, hey, by I, the way, I'm not sure what Buckeye scoop does or doesn't currently have on sale, but you can check all that out. Um, mm-hmm. I, be, I uh, just, just talk to the people on the message board. They'll, they'll let you know. Yes. But all of our other links, uh, links to our YouTube links to our Apple podcast page, uh, links to our Spotify podcast page, links to our t-shirt stores, uh, both for Sloopcast and for 7071, which isn't podcast gear. It's just sort of like 
general, you know, yay Ohio sort of stuff, um, including like a bunch of stuff for smaller cities like Canton and Youngstown and Perrysburg and a bunch of a bunch of places. Um, and uh, yeah, that's and of course, we'll have links to Mad Canadian and Iron Bean Coffee underneath the master link as well. And uh, Kyle, that's all the shilling I feel like doing. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Nothing in terms of nothing in terms of the college football, but I will give a shout out to my hometown. Yeah, yeah, Columbus Grove. Best of luck to them as they move on to their second week of the Division Six Ohio high school football Kyle. playoffs. Is it possible that your Columbus Grove mm -hmm. and the Mad Canadians carry, I assume carry high school, I'm just going to assume that it's carry mm -hmm. high school. They could meet here in a couple weeks, potentially. They technically could. They, they play some tough, <laughs> uh, tough teams to get there, but there's. Listen, definitely. if it, if it happens, we're. For if it happens, and we don't know that it will, if it happens, we're going to have to like coordinate something between you and the Mad Canadian where like you put up a t-shirt and he puts up some spices. Like there has to be a bet. Ooh, ooh, ooh maybe. Now, again, mm. we're, we're several weeks away from that and both teams have a lot of tough games ahead of them. So that might not happen. But if it does, I think we need to do a bet. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I'm just looking here. Do, 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 do. Trying to find where it's at because they keep moving this. I apologize. I should have had this well ahead of time here. Darn, darn Ohio high school keeps changing um, like the seatings and all that too. Um Ah, here we go. They Columbus Grove plays Defiance Tenora. That's who they play. Defiance Tenora and Carey. Actually, Jared, it is. It is. If Columbus Grove wins and Carey wins this weekend, uh huh, they play each other. Well, then there you go. I thought I I thought but, we had a large, uh, bigger. Yeah, I thought there was us. a couple more games before that, but nope. Uh, Carey plays Archbold. All right. Who's the number one seed? So so. We'll know by next episode if they'll be playing each other and we should be able to work out something. Yes. Okay. So everyone uh, cheer for Kerry and Columbus Grove this weekend in Division Six Ohio High School Football. Yes. All right. And I think that's it for Kyle's Corner. That is it. All righty then. What else do we have? Hey, um, Kyle, stall for me while I look up music. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Um, well the football games, actually both of them, Carrie and Columbus Grove both play at 7 PM on Saturday. So you get to watch, you can watch some uh, state football. And then if you're lucky enough, you can stream those football games. Awesome. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called Narrow Arrow. Uh, they're sort of a mathy rock band. So you can check out Narrow Arrow uh, at the end of today's show. You can check the show notes to find out what the name of the song is. Uh, I typically include some links there so you can find some more info on the band if you are interested. And as always, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Narrow Arrow. What's up, YouTube? Ah, oh, that felt nice. We did Know Your Enemy. We picked some games. We picked some Big Ten games. Yes. I don't even mind that I'm a little bit sweaty right now. A little bit it sweaty. It feels right. It does. Kyle's all in black. I'm all in gray, including the gray pants. I got gray pants on. Do you have black pants on? Lie. Pants. Lie. Lie. Kyle, do you have black <laughs> pants on? Sure, I got black <laughs> pants on. Sure. Yes, you heard it here first. Kyle's wearing black pants. Apollo, do you want to make an appearance on the show real quick before it's over? While we're just talking to the YouTube people? Come here. 
Do you want to be on the show? No? Okay. He's like, no, just pet my head. All right, let's rejoin our audio only listeners. Once again, that was Narrow Arrow. And once again, I'd like to thank the Mad Canadian for sponsoring today's episode. Kyle's going to talk a little bit about the Mad Canadian. Yes, the Mad I, Canadian. I surprised him on that one. <laughs> you did, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't right, going to yeah. do both of them. <laughs> yeah, the Mad Canadian has been a sponsor of the Swoopcast for the past year and is celebrating it um, with a special promo code of one year two zero one spell o n e y e a r two zero twenty percent off your entire order. Mad Canadian has, as I mentioned in the middle of the show, what have we not said about him? Just a great guy in person, yeah. um, great food, great seasonings, uh, really just anything that you want to spice up your food or add that little bit of extra kick to a, to a great barbecue. He's got you covered. Uh, the Sonoran heat, the Cajun, the two border, the discord, the old, the four horsemen, just to name a few there. Be sure to check out all of his great seasonings over at the madcanadianbbq.com. That is the madcanadianbbq.com. Mad Canadian, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, they're out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. Uh, you'll, you can check out their stuff at ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, first thing you might notice is that the coffee costs a little bit more than... Uh, some of the stuff you just buy at Walmart or whatever, but it's worth it. Why is it worth it? One, it is a veteran owned company. Two, coffees are made in small batches. Three, it's roast to order. That stuff sitting on the grocery shelf. Lord knows when it was roasted. Lord knows when it was ground up. It's just been sitting there getting stale. Iron bean coffee, roast it after you order it. You can get it in whole bean and grind it yourself. They also sell, I believe all of them in ground as well, but even then it's freshly ground straight from them as opposed to ground how many months ago, like a can of fricking Folgers or whatever. So it's freshly ground, it's freshly roasted. They have a really nice selection. It's veteran owned. It's certified uh, fair trade. It's USDA organic. Uh, They import it straight from the farms to them. Uh, you can save some money by signing up for for subscription services as opposed to one-time purchases. Let's see. Um, I talked a little bit about the Odin during one of the previous ad breaks. Uh, let's talk about the Thor and the Loki. Uh, the Thor is a medium dark. Uh, thunder and lightning will course through your veins, bleed black. And for the Loki, uh, this Wet process blend is higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, and filled with fragrance. Citrus and floral are the dominant taste in this blend. Again, that's the Loki. They have a bunch of great selections. Uh, If you're looking for uh, more of a flavored coffee as opposed to a traditional roast, uh, they do have flavored coffees. They have uh, Mom's Carrot Cake. They have the intense blueberry and the mint chocolate chip flavored coffees. So you can check those out as well. All of this and more. By the way, they have a bunch of great like mugs and apparel and stuff like that. You can also find at Iron Bean Coffee. Free shipping over $50. And again, you can subscribe and save. All of that more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. America's local coffee roaster. (laughs) 